Hi, I'm Heidi Hesrick, biomedical lab science teacher, and today I'm going to walk you through the hair comparison analysis through Ward Science. As you can see, there are eight different samples of hair. We have the hair from the scene, and then we have seven other possible matches. And you just want to decide which one you're going to start with. I'm going to pick um, the scene to begin with. We're starting with the scene sample on the 4X, so we're going to need to get this sample into focus. And I'm just using a little adapter so that my phone can video um, off my microscope. And once we're focused on the 4X at 40 times magnification, I'm going to transition to the 10X so that we can get 40, or I mean, uh, sorry, 100 times magnification and get this to the center of the field of view. Now we have a clear view of the hair from the scene. You can pause the video and then go ahead and sketch the hair and see what you notice about the coloration, presence or absence of medulla, um, and the general characteristics of the hair. The next slide that we're checking out is freckles, and freckles is actually a dog, and this is what the hair looks like under the 4X, and then if we take it up to the 10X, here is what the hair looks like. And I'll shift the focus a little bit, decide when it's at a good spot for you to see the characteristics. And then you can go ahead and pause the video and sketch the hair of Freckles the dog. Now we are viewing the hair of Anna Garcia. And for the first time, I see the presence of medulla. So you can see that dark line that's sort of broken up uh, in the core of the hair. I don't see it on every hair, but at least some of her hair has that distinctive medulla, which makes it a little bit unique. So think about whether Freckles or Anna's hair uh, samples have matched the scene so far. And don't worry if not, because we still have five more samples to go through. Go ahead and pause and get a sketch. Now we're on Sam Green's hair, and I like this sample because you can see that even in the same person, not every single hair looks the same. Um, and so you can note that when you are recording your data for Sam. If I were to just look at this very colorless looking hair with the dark medulla, it looks much different from the browner hairs near it. Could that be some kind of contamination of the sample? which of these is the real hair, because they do look pretty different, or does this particular person just have a variety of different hairs, maybe some highlights or something. Um, so I would draw both of these and make note of the differences in the characteristics of Sam's hair. It's a little hard to get the darker one in focus under the 10X, so I'll go back to the 4X and now we can, it still doesn't want to quite focus. There we go, that's slightly better. So you can see even some of the darker hairs have a medulla. Go ahead and get a good sketch of Sam. Check out Elsie's hair. I think this is pretty wild. The hair follicle itself looks colorless but then down each strand you can see this dark, dark medulla that's almost continuous throughout the strand. So you can go ahead and pause and get a sketch of Elsie's hair. Here's Eric, and I notice with Eric we see a lot of consistency in the five different hair strands in the coloration and the lack of medulla in any of the strands. Pause and sketch. We've now come to Dominique's hair, which you can see that in most of the hair strands there's no medulla present, but in this one strand we see a tiny bit of medulla, so you could note that and decide which focus you prefer. Uh, here's the one with the medulla, and then we can focus on the one without the medulla. It does look like most of the hair is lacking a medulla. The final hair from the scene is Taylor Diaz's, and I picked this little area because I thought it was cool where you can actually see that the hair has broken. Not necessarily relevant to solving the case, but still kind of interesting. And then if we go into the 10X and we get 100 times magnification, you can see the dark, dark pigmentation of this hair. Go ahead and pause and sketch. 
you should now have great sketches of each of the eight scene samples, uh, noting the thickness of the hair, the coloration, presence or absence of medulla, whether the medulla is continuous or um, whether it's broken up. And from that, you should be able to tell whose hair was at the crime scene and match your samples. Good luck solving this forensics case.